The cities are on life support. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Liberals always claim to love urban life. They love mass transportation, chic restaurants, you know, theaters, music venues. It's all so cool, the vibrant social scene. But why kill what you love? And that's exactly what liberals are doing. And they wonder why life in San Francisco, Baltimore, Chicago, and D.C. has become so unlivable. Well, when they wonder that, they should look in the mirror because they're responsible for the slow death of urban America. High taxes, high crime, low office occupancy, lousy schools. This is the quartet of forces inflicted on our cities by politician activists. You know, the same people who often float unscathed above the wreckage that they themselves created. And to cover for their own failures, they pepper their uh, public comments with appeals to phrases like racial equity and reimagined policing. That's my favorite. But vapid social justice jargon just doesn't hide the fact that their own policies are driving away good people and great businesses. Once bustling cities are now struggling. And then with an eroding tax base, it's lights out. Now, the Windy City is now just one big swirl of crime, with thugs so determined that they'll use cars as weapons to gain access to what they want, like this Jeep SUV here. Now, even concrete barriers aren't deterrents. Of course, store owners become repeat victims in this case, and they're fed up. This is probably overall our seventh or eighth break-in in the last year or two, and you know, a lot of people think insurance is easy to get, but, you know, now, you know, we're, we're, we're tightening up and it's hard for us to even get any kind of insurance. So all this, all this will be coming out of pocket. And Democrats can't even get it together to control, control crime when they have popular sports franchises in their major cities. According to a sports book report, 39% of those survey say that they've seen or have been a victim of at least one crime in areas near their NFL team stadiums. The most dangerous stadium areas may surprise you. Denver topped the place with the most crimes per 1,000 people. Next, it was Seattle, then it was Detroit, Minneapolis, and Kansas City. Now, entrepreneurs, they want to be in cities. Why? Because there's lots of foot traffic, young professionals hungry for entertainment, lots of disposable income. But if a city refuses to ensure safe streets, and if they tell government workers, oh, it's fine to work from home, fewer consumers are going to want to spend money and time there. And that means businesses have less income. And when you have to factor in the high cost of doing business these days, eventually the bubble bursts. D.C. restaurant owners are sounding the alarm. We have 11 locations in, in D.C. And over the past year, each one of those locations has been affected by some kind of crime. We now have to spend uh, of, of about $4,000 a week on private security. How much more are you spending on security than you did in years previous? It's probably about 20 to 25 percent more right now. We'll see where it goes in and the future. And what's the total? Well, I'm involved in four restaurants, family-owned restaurants here in the district, and over $225,000 a year we spend on. $225,000 a year? H how is that sustainable? But like many lefty mayors, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser's answer to these concerns about crime, it just downplay the problem. Our experience with crime is kind of a blip. Uh, it's a phenomenon, and we can look back over the, the last several years and see a lot of contributing factors. Um, but we will drive it, it down. Uh, uh, that takes my breath away. Now, politicians may lie, but numbers don't. Check out the crime increases year to date. Homicides up 34% in D.C., robbery 69%. Motor vehicle theft is up a staggering 89%. And total violent crime, this is terrifying, is up 40%. Now, to Muriel Bowser, that qualifies as a blip? Well, I don't think the Washington Capitals owner, Ted Leonsis, shares that opinion. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin announced today that he struck a deal with the franchise owner to move both his NHL and his NBA teams to Northern Virginia. They'll get new facilities, a favorable tax deal, 
and maybe in a far safer community for fans and players. Well, today, a prominent DC radio host explained what happened to lead up to this and how much damage it's going to cause. He said, I keep coming back to an anecdote I saw in the Washington Post in November. DC had always provided Leonsis with 27 cops around the arena to keep his patrons safe until recently. Now they provide three. How many other things have trended that way in the relationship? Moving the teams will be devastating to Penn Quarter. It would be crushing to the city. Well, it's telling that as Youngkin was finalizing the terms of his big get, Bowser was hobnobbing with the elites at the climate summit in Dubai. So when she arrives back in DC to the bad news, all she offers were the typical liberal platitudes. We know that in our city, we have been through very good times, the best of times and some tough times. And some of those times are ripples in our history that we always overcome. Uh, we know that DC fans and DC residents are, are loyal uh, and that they are disappointed today, as am I. Oh, you think? They're disappointed? Oh, that makes it all better. And for all her bluster, DC is in the shape it's in because of the policies and the politicians that she's supported. A bloated bureaucracy, low police recruitment and morale, COVID lockdowns that were never necessary, of course, led to still empty office buildings. And DC's deficit will be $1.7 billion over five years. And the good mayor calls this all a perfect storm to explain it away. Okay, then my question to her is, why hasn't this perfect storm hit Nashville and Miami? Why are they booming? The press tries to act like our populist movement is somehow hostile to cities. But I'm telling you tonight, the opposite is true. We tried, and the angle tried in every way possible, to warn people what would happen if they continued these insane policies. But they did not listen. And Trump, he's a New Yorker. Of course he doesn't want to see New York go down the drain. And last year, DeSantis won Miami-Dade County by double digits. So his policies in that urban area and suburban area are working. We all want to see all of America, including our beautiful cities, flourish. It's the left that's doing everything they can to destroy them. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.